Mort Rainey's alarm clock woke him at 6.15. He took half an hour to bury his cat bump on the banks of Tashmore Lake, and by seven he was behind the wheel of his old Buick heading for Derry, towards the ashes of the house he'd once shared with his wife. Ten miles down the road, Mort noticed he was running on fumes. He pulled into a gas station, and while the pump jockey filled the Buick's bottomless tank, Mort fished out his cell phone. First, he called... Greg Carstairs. Hi, Greg. Mort Rainey. Mort, my man. <laughs> I guess you got some trouble up in Derry. You know about that? Uh, heard it on the radio news. I'm real sorry, man. Oh, thanks, Greg. I'm on my way there now. Can you do me a favor while I'm gone? Well, name it, man. Look, there's been a guy bothering me the last few days. Claims I stole his story. <laughs> I told him I published my version two years before he says he wrote his. I hoped he'd take my word for it, but uh, no such luck. Last night, he, um, he killed my cat. He killed Bump? Yeah, that's right. Well, this guy sounds crazy, Mord. Did he talk to Dave Newsom about this? I'd rather handle it myself. Killing a cat's not killing a man. <laughs> Besides, Dave's uh, slowed a little since he turned 70. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So what do you want me to do about it? Well, for start, I I'd like to know where the guy's staying. Uh, has he got a name? The name on his story was John Shooter. But that might be a pseudonym. Uh, what's he look like, then? Uh, 6'1", 40-something. You have He's three got, days. Uh, I am is. not joking. You know Shooter's dangerous, so why are you playing this down? Do you mean to hurt him? Boots. Is that it? Well, that could be half the farmers in western Maine. Well, okay, okay. Um, he's a southerner, uh, quite an accent. Oh, he wears a black hat, uh, like the Amish. Drives an old Ford station wagon. Uh, it's blue, uh, Mississippi plates. Uh, okay, I'll ask around. Someone should have seen him. Hey, try Tom Greenleaf. I was talking to Shooter yesterday on Lake Drive, and Tom passed in his Jeep. He slowed down to say hi. He must have got a good look at him. Well, suppose I track this guy down, Mort. What do I do? Oh, nothing. I'll call you tonight. Shooter wants proof. He wants to see the magazine with my story in it. Unfortunately, it was in the house in Derry. Oh, man. Yeah, so, so what are you going to so do? So I'm going to call my agent, get him to send another copy. But listen, Mort, if you go to meet this guy, yeah. maybe I should be there in case there's trouble. Then Mort called me, just like he said. My God, Mort. Yeah, wait, Herb. There's more. Not only is my home in ashes and I got a psycho saying I ripped off his story, but the same psycho killed my cat last night. Are you serious? Yeah, plus my divorce is final. And it's colder than a well digger's belt buckle. <laughs> but hey, enough of me. How you doing, Herb? Mort, this shooter fella sounds dangerous. Careful, Mort. You know, Herb, he's going to insist you call the cops. And the house. You really think it's arson? Well, it seems pretty certain. Mort, who do such a thing? Could it be the Shooter fellow? I don't think so, Herb. The timing makes it highly unlikely. Shooter may be spooky, but he can't be in two places at once. Besides, torching a house to get rid of a magazine? Come on. Lord, the characteristic of crazy folks is they do crazy things. Yeah, point taken. But the guy is certain I stole his story. When I said I could prove I didn't, he knew I was lying. So why bother to destroy something you don't believe exists in the first place? Exactly. You've called the cops, of course. Why... Well, yeah, I made a call earlier this morning. To Greg Carstairs. Because you've got enough on your plate without worrying about some madman. If he bothers you again, get him arrested for stalking. I'd rather convince him to take his persecution act and put it on the road. Which is the reason for this call. How can I help you, Mort? You keep my stuff on file. Yeah, but I, I Look, only... I need you to pull the June 90 issue of Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. That, that's the one with my story in it. I wish I could. I, I, I don't have it. Why not? You wrote that story before I came on board as your agent, and so did yourself. I only keep copies of work I sold for you. Sorry, Morn. Oh, God. Oh, how could I forget? I... You've been under a lot of pressure lately, Morn. Yeah. You want me to call EQMM? They keep back issues. Oh, would you, Herb? 
Hey, that'll be swell. Hey, ain't no problem, partner. I'll just settle up my horse, get it around and up right away. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mort. Hi, Annie. Hey, don't I get a hug? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but not a kiss. No kisses for Mort anymore. Not from Amy. I'm so sorry about this. The fire, I mean. Yeah. Me too. Ted's over there. Hey, 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 you hey, you hey, I'm gonna kill you! I am gonna kill you both! Hey there, Mort. Ted. How you keeping? Fine. Why don't we sit down? Well, I bet y'all could use a cup of coffee after that drive. Mm. Yeah, we got time, don't we, honey? Honey. In 20 minutes. And then we gotta go to the site. The site? How sensitive. And to meet Lieutenant Bradley from the Dairy PD. We think the perp tossed it through a window. Just about there. Into your study, Mort. My God. It must have gone up like a rocket. You got any enemies, Mr. Rainey? No one hates me this much. What about this weirdo, Mort? John Shooter, your wife, told me about him. Some uh, dispute over story? Yeah, that's right, Lieutenant. I understand he was pretty angry with you. Angry enough to torture your house? Well, maybe at first, but I looked up the date when my story was first published. Now you scooped him? Eh? Yeah, by two years. He didn't realize the story was originally printed in a magazine, so I had him, you see. I see, Mr. Rainey. But did he? Oh, um... Tell them what Shooter did to Bump and it'll break Amy's heart and open up a nasty can of worms. Did he see, Mr. Rainey? Yes, Lieutenant. He saw. So what the heck did he do, Mort? He uh, jumped into his car like his ass was on fire and took off. You haven't noticed the make and license? Oh, sorry, I'm not too hot with cars. Well, the guy himself, then. What did he look like? Oh, 30-something. Uh, blonde. Yeah? Uh, average height. That's really all I remember. Didn't you say he wore a hat? Oh, thank you, Amy. Yeah, uh, a baseball cap. Look, Lieutenant, I know in novels if everything's connected, but in real life things just happen. Couldn't this be vandals, local kids out for kicks? Could be. It doesn't hurt to check all the angles, though, does it? Well, I'm done for now. Here's my card. Any more thoughts on the matter? <clears throat> oh, I'll call you, of course. Thanks. Mrs. Rainey, Mr. Milner? I'm sorry about this, Amy. All of it. So am I. And Teddy makes three. <laughs> God, I'd like to strangle that man till his eyes pop out. Amy? Now, now, remember what Lieutenant Bradley said about it being unsafe. Eh? Don't worry, Ted. We just want to take a last look, Ted. Yeah. Why don't you just wait there? Okay, but be careful, honey. I'm glad the flowers are over. Mm. The fire would have burned them, too. That, that would have been sad. This was your private garden. Mm. Tucked in the angle between your study and the rest of the house. You could only see it properly from my little office. Yeah. Amy's room. Best darn room in the house. Too small, <laughs> too, too noisy. noisy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sound of the washing machine coming through the wall was comforting. Yeah. I planted the flowers especially so I could see them from the window. Remember what I used to say? I've got a secret window looking down on a secret garden. What? What was that? <laughs> I said I've got a secret window and it looks down on a secret garden. Secret window, secret garden. A short story by John Shute. Oh, my God. Mort? Are you okay? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, to tell the truth, I feel a little faint. Yeah, you should have eaten something at the coffee shop, good buddy. It's not about food, Ted. It's it's all this. Let's get out of here. Well, the insurance people will do it now. Well, th yeah. that's an hour from now. Let's get out of here, Ted. I, 
I don't feel so hot myself. They met Fred Evans, an arson specialist of the house, then went back to the company office. Evans asked pretty much the same questions as Lieutenant Bradley, except he was gentler and more probing. You've been helpful. Courteous, too. Well, you made it easy for us, Mr. Evans. Well, I'm afraid this next part ain't easy. Now, um... This is a... It's a list of the house contents. I, I want you to put a check mark by any items that are no longer in your possession or that weren't in the house at the time of the fire. I'm told there's been a separation of residents recently, so that last bit is important. Yeah, Amy and I are divorced. I'm living at our summer place on Tashmore Lake. Unfortunately, I hadn't moved any of my stuff out of the house here. I, I kept putting it off. Yeah, well, do your best. I know it's unpleasant, a uh, bit like a treasure hunt in reverse. Amy, let's see. Hey, back off. Uh, Mort. This was our stuff, Amy. Ours. Mort, come on. You think I uh, care uh, Mr. about... Mr. Milner, please. Uh, you got no legal right to look at that list. We wink at it if nobody minds, but I think Mr. Rainey does. You're damn right I do. All right. I'll take a walk around the block. Well, would you, Ted? It, it might be easier. Yeah, make it a couple of blocks. I'll see you later, honey. Why don't I see you out, Mr. Milner? Thank you. Satisfied? Amy, I'm sorry. I, I didn't handle that well, but we shared a lot over the years, and this is the very last thing. Okay? Okay. Oh, God, the photo albums. Oh, the Waterford Crystal. And that little Wyeth sketch of the boys in the boat. Oh, oh, Amy. The quilt my mother gave us when we got home. Ten long, sad minutes later, it was over. Mort and Amy both signed the affidavit, thanked Fred Evans, then met Ted Moona outside the insurance office. Well, uh, Amy and I are going to grab us a bite of lunch, Mort. You care to join us? Ah, uh, no thanks. I just want to get back, do some work. See if I can forget all this for a while. Good yeah. idea. Thanks for coming, Mort. Okay. For being so reasonable about everything. You'll be okay? We'll be okay. Hey, Mort, don't y'all worry now. Teddy's gonna take good care of this little lady. Come on. Ted. Your accent. Hmm? Is it Mississippi? No, a long way north of there. I grew up in a little town 50 miles south of Nashville. You wouldn't have heard of it. It's Shooter's Ridge, Tennessee. Mort drove back to Tashmore in a daze got a secret window and it looks down on a secret garden. Secret window, secret garden. A short story by John Shooter. Is it all coincidence? What's well, possible? Shooter's Ridge, Tennessee. Do you believe it's coincidence? No. Someone's burned our house down, Lord. So what the hell is going on? Show a little patience, Mr. Rainey. You'll find out soon enough. Psych me out. It won't work. I'm wise to your game. He's a violent man. Get some protection. Yeah. You upstairs, shooter? Why are you doing this? Come on, come on, wherever you are! Try the bathroom. Slowly. Slowly. One. Two. 
schools. Three! You burned the shooter! I'll teach you to kill me, you stealing! You bastard! Great. You've killed the mirror. You've brained the bathroom cabinet and killed the goddamn mirror. I'm so tired. I'm just so tired. Fine, Mr. Shooter. Oh, I don't think so. Stealing the work of another man don't ever seem to have bothered you none. Now, Being look here. caught out, though. <laughs> that seems to have given you the pure miseries. What are you talking about? I saw how your other house burned down. Then when you come back here, well, sounded like you pitched a fit. All that hollering you and You were here. Threw a tantrum, did you? Because things weren't going your way. When you see the magazine with my story in it, will you leave me alone? There ain't no magazine. We both know that. Now, God damn it! you'll see that the... I saw a picture of your house in the newspaper. What was left of it. Had a picture of your wife, too. Pretty woman. You leave Amy out of this. This is between you and me. So you haven't mentioned it to anyone else? What do you want, Shooter? What the hell do you want? I want you to write me a story. What? I want you to write me a story, put my name on it, and give it to me. You owe me that. You still breathing there, Mr. Rainey? The only thing I'll write for you is your death warrant. Oh, you talk big. Because you know I can't hurt on you. Can't break your neck like I broke your cats because the goods I want are locked up in your head. So I gotta find me the key, Pilgrim. What the hell are you jabbering about, Pilgrim? I'd like to leave her out of it. I really would. What are you saying? How'd you like to wake up from one of your naps to find Amy nailed to the porch? That's what I'm saying. You have two days to think about that, Mr. Rainey. Herb, Herb, that story. Have you got it? What story, Maud? Sewing season, remember? Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. Oh, that. Well, you didn't forget to call, did no, you? No, no, I called. Just slipped my mind for a moment. You're losing your house and all. Yeah, so the magazine's coming? Oh, absolutely. They're going to bike a Xerox over to me tomorrow. I'll FedEx uh, no. it. No, 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 not, not a Xerox, Herb. A copy won't do. It's just got to be the real magazine. Oh, well, that's, that's tougher. They don't like lending them out. Herb, please. This is life and death. Shooter's that paranoid, huh? I'm afraid so. Is he dangerous, too? Oh, no, no, not dangerous, just very stubborn. And I want him off my back. I've taken a lot of crap lately I could do nothing about. Okay, but this, Maud, I... I'll beg him or I'll bribe him, but I'll get it to you. One original copy of EQMM June 90. Hey, Herb, I love you. <laughs> You're one hell of a swell guy. Oh, shucks, a male's got to do what's right, Pilgrim. You talk big, Pilgrim. What? Maud? Maud, are you still there? Uh, yeah. Uh, s sorry. A, a bad line. I lost you for a moment. Look, Herb, I, I won't keep you now, but thanks. You're a real lifesaver. You're welcome. And Maud, yeah. take care. Hey, there goes another float on the parade of coincidences. It was just a word. Well, so what then? Shooter's the devil? If he is, surely he'd know I didn't commit plagiarism. Not on that story. Not that story? Were there others? Hey. No. No, my work may be a little derivative at times, but plagiarism... No, no, no! Mort, are you in there? Oh. 
Hiya, Greg. Hang on, I'm coming. Come in. I, uh... <laughs> caught up with Tom Greenleaf this afternoon. He and Sonny Trotz are painting the Methodist Parish Hall. Did you ask Tom about Shooter? Yeah, I did. Tom thinks you must have mixed up your days. Mixed up? What does he mean? He says he did swing by Lake Drive yesterday afternoon, and he did see you. Uh huh. He waved, you waved back, but... But, but what? Tom says you were alone. Jeez, Greg. Well, maybe Tom's mixed up. He's not exactly, uh... A spring chicken? No, but he's got an eye for strangers. It's part of his job. He looked right at us, Greg. At both of us. Tom didn't see Shooter's station wagon either? He says he only saw you, standing by the path that runs down to the lake. Greg, did Tom seem okay when you talked to him? He was dog-tired. He'd been painting all day. I see what you're saying, Morton. I guess he could have slipped his mind. No, that's not what I'm saying. When you spoke to him, could Tom have been scared? What? Well, it's possible. You see, Greg, I'm beginning to think that Shooter wants me, and maybe others too, to believe I'm going mad. I think we should go over to Tom's place. Now. Make sure he's okay. No pin to the door. What does it say? Do not disturb. Greg, I don't like it. He's in bed. I can see him breathing. Even so, something's not right. Tom saw us on Lake Drive, both of us. I believe you, man. I don't like the way Tom sounded earlier. Well, he was off, you know? Yeah. Well, let's talk to him together in the morning. We'll catch him at the Methodist Parish Hall around 9.30. Next morning, when he woke on the living room couch, Mort felt like he'd spent all night digging ditches. Three aspirin and a hot shower made him feel a little better. He spent ten minutes looking for his car keys, then got into his Buick and drove to the parish hall. Sonny! Sonny! Hi there. Sonny, I'm looking for Tom Greenleaf. Mm -hmm. I thought he was helping you. Well, he was, Mr. Rainey, but he called in sick. It didn't sound his usual self at all. When was this? Oh, it's early. About six. This wind is giving him a chill. Anything I can do? No, I need Tom. Mm. Have you seen Greg Carstairs? I'm supposed to meet him here. Oh, I hasn't been around this morning. I've been painting here for better than an hour. Shooter got them. He got them both. I guess he just forgot. Yeah. I guess so. Oh, hey, M Mr. Rainey, I, I just thought of something. Mr. Rainey? Mort drove home round the edge of the lake. The trees blazed with late fall fire, but the lake itself looked cold and dead. No boats, no hikers, no picnickers on the banks. Hello? Stop the car, Mr. Rainey. How the hell did you get my cell phone number, Shooter? That's unlisted. A lot of things about you ain't listed, Mr. Rainey. I still know them, though. Now pull in, unless you want to crash. Now look here, Shooter. Stay on the phone. Get out of the car. Where are you? Are you watching me? Walk around to the back of the car. Yeah. And now open the trunk. A little 
souvenir. Your hat. Oh, when did you put that there? Did, <laughs> did you take my car last night? Pick it up. It stinks, Shooter. Sweat and cigarettes and you. Try it on. Oh, thanks. I'd rather not. Go on. You know you want to. Good fit? Why are you doing this? What do you expect? Listen up. Remember where we were standing yesterday when that old fart in the Jeep tore by? I remember. I want you to drive there. Now, look, I'm not now. Mess Shooter? Shooter, where are you? Right. See that copse of trees down toward the lake? I see it. Take a stroll down there. Tell me what you see. I don't believe I want to, Mr. Shooter. <laughs> yes, Mr. Rainey, I believe you do. You know what you're going to find. See anything interesting yet? There it is. Tom Greenleaf's Jeep. Oh, God. Oh, no. Tom in the front. Greg in the back. Open the door. Take a closer look. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See the name on the axe handle? Rainy. I found a screwdriver in your tool shed, too. You, you probably recognize it. Killed them. You killed them both. I know that. And you know that. But who knows what other folks will think. Shooter! It was just a squirrel looking down at Mort with bright hate from the branch of a maple. But Mort's legs gave up anyway. He collapsed like a tree, and the world swam away. What do you want, Shooter? What the hell do you want? I want you to write me a story. Not only is my home in ashes, and I've got a psycho saying I ripped off his story, but the same psycho killed my cat. How'd you like to wake up from one of your naps to find Amy nailed to the porch? I'll kill you! I am gonna kill you both! Oh,